Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at our tropical cyclones and disturbances across the eastern Pacific and the North Atlantic respectively. And so before I go into details, All right, so let's go ahead and start out with Hurricane K over in the Eastern Pacific. And so as of right now, K has maximum sustained winds of 85 miles per hour, and it is accelerating to the north-northwest at 14 miles per hour. So a section of the Baja California Peninsula is under a hurricane warning, but there is a tropical storm warning that is in effect for a majority of the area, as well as uh, sections of northwestern Mexico. And so K is a weakening cyclone, and... Uh, regardless, though, it is going to be bringing a lot of heavy rainfall to the Baja California Peninsula. Uh, but we see that maybe by sometime on Saturday, it is going to be becoming post-tropical and making a curve to the south. And so in terms of the rainfall amounts that is expected, most areas expected to have, say, one to four inches of rainfall and even some isolated maximums of six to 10 inches and even 15 inches in some areas so a lot of heavy rainfall coming from k and uh when it comes on to any tropical cyclone affecting anywhere the main problem is usually with the water be it from the storm surge that inundation or the heavy rainfall that occurs as a result of the cyclone and so if you're being affected by k please ensure that you're taking all the necessary precautions and do not take any unnecessary risks all right go Going over into the Atlantic Basin now, we have Danielle, Earl, and these two disturbances. So let's go ahead and kick start with Danielle. And so we're looking at the cone forecast for it. And so Danielle should become post-tropical by later today. And so uh, the remnants are likely to be making their way over into portions of Western Europe, maybe sometime in the early part of next week. But, but Danielle is not expected to bring any major impacts to anywhere, guys. All right, let's go ahead and move on to Earl. And we're looking at infrared satellite of the cyclone. And here we have it, uh, that eye is trying to come out. And looking at shortwave infrared satellite, here we are seeing that uh, Earl is looking a lot better on this satellite presentation here. But nonetheless, it is is intensifying and so a tropical storm warning as well as a hurricane watch are in effect for Bermuda and looking at the cone forecast now for Earl we're seeing here that the storm has maximum sustained winds of 105 miles per hour making it a category 2 hurricane and it is accelerating to the north at 9 miles per hour so much more intensification is expected of this as a matter of fact Earl is expected to become a category 4 hurricane and that would make it the strongest of the season thus far and uh, by tomorrow it is going to be at its closest approach to Bermuda and is likely to bring tropical storm or hurricane like conditions there so if you're in Bermuda ensure that you are prepared for this and uh, do not take any unnecessary risks and so this system is going to be making its way to the northeast uh, as we head throughout the weekend going to early next week but it should become post tropical by sometime Saturday afternoon and aside from Bermuda it is not likely to be a threat to any anywhere but the most significant thing with this is that it is expected to become a category 4 hurricane a major hurricane out there and the strongest of the season thus far but we could have more cyclones uh, i mean it's likely that we will have a lot more cyclones throughout the rest of the hurricane season that could become a lot more significant than early and even be threats to land so thus far i mean it is miraculous that nowhere has been impacted by any major cyclones because uh, for the past several years we've seen that especially in the months of August and September especially late August and going into September so this year things are a little bit more quiet and we're not seeing anything major heading anywhere but that could change within the next several weeks to come now let's go ahead and move on to the disturbances starting out with invest 95l and looking at it on satellite here we have all the shower and thunderstorm activity taking place with it but it is not really getting itself together there so uh, some of that shower and thunderstorm activity is lacking in some areas 
And so there is a 70% chance that we could see this become a tropical cyclone uh, over the next 48 hours and 5 days. And so it is going to be encountering more unfavorable conditions as we head into the latter part of this week though. So it has limited time out there to get itself together. So let's see if it is going to be doing that or if it is just going to succumb to the unfavorable environment when it encounters it and won't become anything major. But regardless, it is not going to be a threat to land. That is for sure and so looking at this next disturbance now we see that the national hurricane center designates a 30 percent chance uh, for possible development within this area so we have that tropical wave just emerging off the coast of africa and so looking at it on satellite here we're seeing it seems possible deep convection associated with it and so environmental conditions appear conducive for development over the next several days but the best chance would be once it makes its way just to the southwest of the cabo verde islands and is continuing towards the west or the west northwest so we'll see what happens with it will this be a threat to land only time will tell and as i mentioned in previous videos now is the time of year to really keep our eyes out there on the tropics but uh let's see if this system here is going to become anything significant although i kind of doubt it and so the track of it is going to be determined by the bermuda high so if we have a stronger high out there then we should expect a more westward track with the disturbance and in that case it will would be a problem for the Caribbean. However, if there is a weaker high, then we should see more of a west northwestward like track or northwestward like track with the system. So, only time will tell what's going to be happening. I mean, it has just emerged off Africa, that wave is just uh, now off the coast, and so. Uh, as time goes by, we'll see what the best outcome is going to be for the system in terms of the intensity as well as where it'll go, if it is going to be a fish storm or if it is going to be making its way close to the Caribbean and maybe bring in some impacts. But there's a lot more activity like this to come in the future as we progress into the next several weeks of the hurricane season. But the peak of the season is on Saturday and Earl is likely going to be dominating at that time, maybe as a major hurricane and maybe having the intensity that the National Hurricane Center has predicted. So category four intensity, uh, maybe with winds of 130 miles per hour. I wouldn't be surprised if it's much stronger than that, but that is what the National Hurricane Center is expecting. But the good news is that after it makes its way past Bermuda, even though it's going to be bringing impacts, it is not likely to affect anywhere else. So it's going to be staying out there as a major storm. However, it is going to likely result in those rip currents for the east coast of the U.S. through the weekend. And we know that rip currents are very dangerous. And so because of that possible threat, uh, it is best that you take the necessary precautions if you're planning to go to the beach and uh, ensure that you stay safe. And so guys, that is really it for this update video. And so if you found it to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be otherwise.